Well, good Saturday morning. Another sunrise with Pastor Hayton here. I've been sharing with you my memoirs, and I'm enjoying sharing those. And I had some favorable comments. Some of you have commented how much you're enjoying me sharing some of my life's memories and experiences. I hope it'll get more interesting as I get a little bit uh, into the into the older years of my life. I've been talking about moving from West Virginia to Natoma, Kansas back in 1948 and spending six years out there in Natoma. They were happy years for, I think, our entire family. I believe that uh, I have nothing but good memories of growing up out there and enjoying the neighbors that we had and the church that we had. Must have been a good church. As I said the other day, I believe it had a terrific impact upon my life. And those godly Kansas people, I believe that their influence uh, was, was good for me. And I remember, you know, back in the day when people come to prayer meeting and everybody get up to testify. And I'd remember as a boy sitting there and listening to the adults get up and talk about being saved and sanctified and satisfied and you know, I've heard testimonies all my life, and most of them are just about the same. And and I remember, though, those big old Kansas farmers, of course, they probably weren't as big as I remember them being as a small boy, but I remember sitting in the pew and looking up as they would testify and talk about the goodness of the Lord and how happy they were serving Him and testify to how God had been faithful to them. And I just believe that that was a good diet for me because... Uh, I've remembered those testimonies and I've observed the lives that were lived as a boy growing up out in Kansas. I just believe those Kansas people are just good people. But anyway, uh, we had a camp meeting back there and our little church out in Natoma participated in the camp meeting, a beautiful campground down by the creek. And uh, that little creek, sometimes it didn't have much water in it. But generally had enough water, we could go down and catch crawdads and, and uh, dam it up a little bit and make a hole big enough to splash around in. And So I'm thinking about that beautiful little spot and the camp meeting days that we had. Uh, I'm writing here that there was a tabernacle with fresh straw for a floor every camp meeting time. And I remember as children, uh, there's all that wheat straw in and we sat with our head down between our knees most of the time, digging through the straw, looking for heads of wheat that we could glean and, and to chew on for a little while. Uh, that's what I remember most about camp meeting. I wonder what the evangelists thought. Maybe they thought they had us under deep conviction and uh, we were praying with our head down as it was, but all we were doing was looking for the heads of wheat so that we could have something to chaw on during camp meeting time. But there was always the straw floor that uh, always had such a good smell and offered the uh, uh, grains of wheat to chew on. There was always a big tent erected back of the tabernacle for children's services. And I can't say that I've got really fond memories of that. I think it's probably because we would rather have been down by the creek plain rather than sitting under a stuffy tent. But uh, I remember the camp meeting days and how the camp meeting uh, meals were brought in, and uh, we just had a lot of good fellowship. People came from miles around to the Natoma camp. I remember we had Art Matheson, who was, or Jim Matheson, it was, that uh, one day the ladies had made some sandwiches for lunch, and uh, Jim went out and caught one of these great big old grasshoppers that you find out in Kansas, and he pulled the head off that grasshopper, took a bite out of his sandwich, and then he opened it up and put the grasshopper there, the headless grasshopper, and it looked like he'd just taken a big bite and bitten the head off a grasshopper. And he was going around showing everyone what the cooks had done for him. Well, just memories like that that stay with you down across the years. But one particular camp meeting, the Harold Greers from Tulsa, Oklahoma, visited the camp meeting. That was in the year of 1954. I remember Brother Harold Greer talking with Dad in what seemed, from my observation, a very serious talk. Brother Greer must have persuaded my dad to accept the church in Tulsa because shortly thereafter we were loaded and headed for Tulsa to have a new home and a new church. 
I know a few days before my family left for Tulsa, Mary and Ray and Dad had taken our furniture and household goods down in Marion's big truck, and we left Natoma, all six of us, in a 1950 Buick, drove most all day to get to our new home. We arrived late in the evening to a small parsonage, and I mean a very small parsonage, and I'll talk about that when I talk about the Tulsa days, but a very small parsonage sitting directly behind the church, and uh, there it was that uh, we were to, to make our home. And I remember that it was my birthday. Of course, I had been aware of that all day long that we had left on my birthday, but I remembered after we arrived in Tulsa that I had no cake. I was 11 years old and probably too big to cry, but I've always been somewhat of a crybaby. I still cry once in a while. I started crying. Dad had to go out in an unfamiliar town, found a store open, and uh, all he could find was a brownie mix. And while he was out buying that brownie mix, Mom was rummaging around the packs boxes looking for a baking pan. But after a while, we had a pan of brownies for my birthday, and I was happy our first evening in Tulsa. So we had good days there in Natoma, but we were opening up a brand new chapter in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll have a little bit to say about that. Well, let's pray and ask God to bless us throughout this day. Heavenly Father, we need your blessing. We need your help every step of the way. Pray that I will be with us today and help us, Lord, that we can prepare our hearts for the Lord's day tomorrow. Just give us a great weekend. Bless each one of our lives. Make us a blessing, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks again. We'll see you Monday now on Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Goodbye.